So uh, it is an absolute honor to uh, present the Kerasoft IC lens design, which is a soft, customized soft lens for keratoconus and other irregular corneas. This presentation is brought to you uh, by the support of the Bausch & Lomb Custom Lab Channel, as well as Metro Optics. And so what we're going to do today is describe the, uh, the, the design itself and what it's used for. Before I get started, uh, my name is Lynette Johns. I serve as a consultant to the Bausch & Lomb Custom Lab Channel, and I'm also uh, an adjunct assistant professor at the New England College of Optometry, where I see my patients at the New England Eye Institute. So today's presentation, uh, we're going to describe how soft contact lenses are used for irregular corneas. We're going to describe the features um, and benefits of the Kerasoft IC lens design. We'll over, go through an overview of the fitting process, and we'll also direct you on where you can uh, receive more training about this particular design. Now, contact lens options for keratoconus um, include the, uh, all of these modalities that you can see here. We've got corneal lenses, scleral lenses, and hybrid lenses. And one thing that they all have in common is they have a rigid, gas-permeable uh, optic zone. And that rigidity provides a nice, smooth, refracting surface, almost an artificial cornea, per se. And underneath the rigid surface, the space between the irregular cornea and the back surface of the lens is filled either with the patient's own tears, in the case of corneal lenses and hybrid lenses, or they're filled with uh, supplemental preservative-free artificial tears or saline, like in the case of scleral lens. And what the, the, the liquid does is it actually fills in the gaps between the irregular surface and the back surface of the lens, the irregular surface of the cornea, I should say, and the back surface of the lens. And that creates one um, optical system, and so it masks the irregularity, and that's how the patient is able to achieve um, their visual rehabilitation with these lenses. So how do the soft contact lenses fall into play? And we're going to describe the traditional soft contact lenses and also um, just to highlight what's unique about the Kerasoft IC lens design. So <clears throat> why would you consider a soft contact lens for your regular cornea patient? Well, one main feature is lens intolerance. I mean, we've, we've all had those patients that have that perfect GP fit for their keratoconus, and they just cannot tolerate the lens for even a minute in their eye. And so what do you do with those patients? Um, there's also problems with hybrid lenses where sometimes they have problems removing the lens. And, you know, in scleral lenses, they can be a little intimidating for patients, whether it's the size or the cost. So soft lenses um, provide excellent comfort, like we already know with our traditional soft lens patients. And the other thing, too, is that you know, all irregular cornea patients really benefit visually with a contact lens. We know that their spectacle vision is subpar and sometimes not even functional for them. <clears throat> so how they actually work is that they, um, they're designed to fit over the whole cornea. So not just the cornea and the limbus, but they also rest on the sclera. And what this serves to do is it allows the lens to be centered. It allows the optics to be centered. So if we think about GP corneal lenses, typically um, you have your optic zone, but your optic zone not only houses the optics for that patient, it also houses the fitting curve. And so that fitting curve is going to fit over the steepest portion of the cornea. It's quite rare that the steepest portion of the cornea in keratoconus is actually centrally. So oftentimes the apex of the cornea is displaced, taking the GP corneal lens optics with it. So uh, that can be uh, 
rather problematic for your patients, especially with a low cone and a small diameter lens, they might not be getting the benefit of the best optics. So soft contact lenses do provide nice central optics. Now soft contact lenses for regular corneas have been around for, for a little over 30 years. And how they actually worked is almost mimicking the effect of a corneal uh, lens or the GP lenses that we talked about. What they employ is increasing center thickness in order to increase the rigidity of the soft lens. And so as a result, tears pool underneath the soft lens and create that masking effect. Uh, and some, so these lenses are also uh, really only available in hydrogel materials. So with the low decays of the materials and the increasing center thickness, we really are reducing um, the maximum amount of oxygen that's reaching the irregular cornea that we're trying to fit. So Bausch & Lomb licensed the Kerasoft IC lens design from Ultravision in England uh, back in 2011. So this lens, while it's new, it's not that new. It's been around for a couple of years now. So when we think about our lens material options, like I said, the hydrogel materials uh, are range between 38 to 59 percent water content and the DK ranges from 8 to 34. So again, when we're increasing that center thickness to create a um, rigid effect, what ends up happening is we end up decreasing the amount of oxygen that's reaching the cornea. Now, the Kerasoft IC lens uses silicone hydrogel, a lathable silicone hydrogel material called Definitive that has a DK value of 60. And so this is what uh, is a nice feature and is uh, kind of sets this uh, lens apart at least for oxygen permeability. Who are the candidates for, uh, for soft lenses with irregular corneas? Well, typically we think of keratoconus, and we have the whole family of naturally occurring ectasias. We have early onset uh, keratoconus um, that does quite well with this design. Um, so the younger children and um, and adults that uh, are starting to present with keratoconus or some steepening form first keratoconus in those patients that. Um, are detected in refractive surgery centers that might actually be experiencing some glare um, and shadowing, uh, this lens can also be helpful for those patients. Uh, we also have pellucid marginal degeneration and keratoglobus as part of the naturally occurring ectasias. Now those patients that have had the naturally occurring ectasias might have already underwent some form of surgical correction, such as uh, intacts or intrastromal ring implants or corneal cross-linking, and these lenses can also uh, fit over those types of corneas. Patients that uh, underwent refractive surgery and had a poor outcome, typically the post-LASIK ectasia patients or the radial keratotomy patients, they also are candidates for the KIC lens design. Um, corneal transplants, they can be really tricky to fit because they're unpredictable. Uh, you don't know, you don't have a predictable, predictable curvature of the cornea, and so that can make uh, corneal lens fitting in particular very challenging uh, with a lot of instability uh, and sometimes harsh bearing on that graft host junction. And lastly, the, the really important feature of this lens uh, for irregular corneas is it's a comfortable lens. So for those patients that suffer from these particular conditions that I mentioned here, um, if they're already intolerant to whatever lens modality that they have that is a rigid lens, whether it's a, 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 a hybrid or a corneal GP, or they just um, aren't ready to try a scleral, uh, they make a really good candidate for the Kerasoft um, IC lens. 
So it's really important, not just with uh, the Kerasoft lens, but any type of uh, lens correction for a regular corneas, you should know what you're working with. You need to um, understand the corneal shape that you have. And so here we have represented topographies and OCT images of irregular corneas. Starting on the left, we have a typical with the rule normal cornea for comparison. And what I think is really important to look at here is we have, uh, when you're looking at the keratoconus and the pellucid, you can see where that steepening is occurring. But what I'd like to draw your attention to is the superior aspect of these corneas. And keratoglobus here is a little bit of an exception. But when you look at keratoconus and pellucid, the superior aspect of the cornea really isn't that much different than the normal cornea. The reason I'm bringing this up is because, like I said, all soft lenses for this category fit over the entire cornea. Using the Kerasoft IC lens, you're going to be using flatter base curves than you traditionally think of when fitting uh, irregular corneas. And that's mainly because you're not just fitting the steepest portion of the cornea, you're fitting the peripheral cornea as well. So it's not that uncommon to have base curves of, say, 8.2, 8.4, even 8.6, or even flatter when using the Kerasoft IC lens design. And again, these base curves are very similar to what you fit uh, with a soft sphere if you have a standard myope coming into your office. So let's start talking about the Kerasoft IC lens design. It's designed to fit all stages of keratoconus and other irregular corneas. I, I want to mention the IC of the Kerasoft IC design means irregular cornea. So the Kerasoft IC lens drapes over the cornea rather than using thickness of material to mask the irregularity. So in this case, we do not want to have excess tear pooling underneath this lens. So, we, uh, so this lens is really meant to drape over the irregularity. As a result, you will have a, a cylindrical component come through in your over-refractions. So this lens is a kind of a very powerful soft toric lens because you are able to put that cylindrical component into the, the correction of this lens. I apologize for this slide being so busy. These are the, all of the par parameters of the Kerasoft IC lens. Uh, the base curve, again, um, I'm just going to highlight some of the features here just to put it in context of fitting. The base curve, the steepest base curve is the 7.4. So again, we have to remember we're no longer fitting that apex of the ectasia. We're fitting the overall corneal shape. So again, um, we're going to be using flatter base curves, as you can see from the parameters listed here. The standard diameter is a 14.5 diameter, and that's in the fitting set, but it can may be made smaller or larger in 0.5 millimeter steps. Now, the reason that the lens corrects the um, irregularity is because of the front surface optics. They use front surface aspheric and aspheric toric optics, and that's what creates the optical effect. In, in essence, it's taking the irregular astigmatism and making it more regular, and that's how you can correct it with the front toric optics available in this design. The lens is stabilized with a prism ballast, and um, another feature is that the periphery can be steepened or flattened independently of the overall base curve. So <clears throat> what's nice is we might have those challenging corneal transplants, for example, and uh, oftentimes they have an oblate uh, profile, so that means they're flatter in the center and steeper uh, in the periphery. So if we were to fit a corneal GP lens, there would be a lot of edge lift, so sometimes we would fit a reverse geometry corneal GP lens on this type of shape. Well, this soft lens also can be created in a reverse geometry type profile. You can change the peripheral curve of this lens steeper 
than the base curve, or even flatter in the cases of uh, a nipple cone with a flat periphery. The power range is pretty extensive, um, and the cylindrical component here is also extensive. And uh, I know that a lot of times we shy away from providing the, the highest cylinder power when fitting a, uh, a, a standard soft toric lens for our, our astigmatic patients. However, with this design, we want to actually provide the maximum amount of sill power that we ref we refract. The patient will achieve their visual benefit in doing so. The material, as I said before, is uh, the definitive material and the DK is 60. This is a silicone hydrogel material in this lens. So uh, I'd like to uh, show you, this is the Kerasoft IC website, or sorry, the Kerasoft training website. Uh, if you just go to kerasofttraining.com, you will be directed to the training website and you can select Metro Optics as your lab of choice for um, receiving uh, this lens. The training in, is uh, about six to seven different training modules and they are small videos. The longest I think is six minutes. Um, they're very easy to get through. And so all the features that I'm highlighting today, they go into a little more depth and how to um, evaluate the lenses based on these criteria that we're going to overview today. So once you've viewed all of the video vignettes, um, it keeps track of which videos you've seen. And once you've completed all of the viewing of each of these uh, modules, then you will take a short quiz. And the quiz is seven questions long, and once you um, once you answer them correctly, you will be certified for fitting this design. So uh, you will receive a, a Kerasoft IC uh, certification um, certificate, and that will be emailed to you as well. And at this point, you will be able to order the trial set from Metro Optics. There is a fitting guide, a paper fitting guide, so you don't have to remember everything from all the videos. And while we all know how to fit soft contact lenses, this one is a little more involved because you're fitting irregular corneas with it. So the fitting guide is actually a great reference in addition to the training modules, uh, just when you're getting started fitting this lens design. The trial set is an eight lens trial set. And what I'd like to focus on is the core lenses, which are the first six lenses that we see here, the 7.8 to 8.8 .8 standard lenses. So again, the power is Plano of all of these lenses and the diameter is 14.5, but these can be customized when you order them. The standard periphery pretty much fits most of the patients that you'll be encountering when uh, you're using this lens design. Now, to go one step in this design is 0.2 millimeters of radius different. So going from an 8.0 to an 8.2 is one step flatter in the periphery. And the reason I'm bringing this up, or not just in the periphery, it's just one step flatter in the lens, is because we have the last two lenses, which are these unique lenses for those um, different corneal shapes that you encounter. So remember I was talking about the reverse geometry um, type of lens that you can create with the Kerasoft. Well, in the fitting set, you actually do have a reverse geometry lens that you can use. This is an 8.6, so it's relatively flat base curve with a steep to uh, periphery. So what that means is that this lens in the center, the base curve is 8.6, but the periphery is equivalent to an 8.2 standard lens. So you're kind of mixing and matching your um, two trial lenses into one. And so I would use that lens in cases of corneal transplants or those oblate corneas from uh, refractive surgery that had their refractive surgery, whether it's RK or whether it's post-LASIK um, or post-PRK. While they do have an inferior ectasia that's a steepening, the overall corneal profile is oblate. So the 8-2 steep 
or sorry, 8-2 flat 2 lens in the set. So the 8-2 is relatively steep base curve, and the flat 2 is equivalent to an 8-6 periphery. Uh, this is a lens that you'd actually use on that, say, central nipple cone with a more of a flat corneal periphery. And we'll describe in the fitting steps and how you would actually determine when you would use that lens. So uh, the, we're going to just go through an overview of the fitting process. First, you want to determine your overall corneal profile and shape, and that's going to, with the help of the fitting guide, help you select your first initial diagnostic lens. Now, when you apply that diagnostic lens to the eye, you're going to be using what's called the dynamic assessment technique using the Morocco VA acronym, and we'll go into that in, in the, just a few slides. Um, and there's also a paper form that helps you keep track of all the steps so that you uh, can really have an overview of your fitting assessment. <clears throat> So when we're observing the corneal profile, you can do it two ways. You can use the slit lamp, or you can just generally look at the profile outside of the slit lamp, and that's typically what I do. Um, if you're using the slit lamp, you can see uh, here she has the uh, housing of the slit lamp perpendicular to the patient's face, so this way you can get an actual profile view that you see in this image here. And what you want to do is you want to determine where your steepest portion of your cornea is. So you want to see if it's displaced from the um, visual axis. Is if the cone is central, is it a low cone, is it, a, is it pellucid? Then the next thing you want to do is you want to look at the overall corneal shape. And again, I typically use the superior aspect of the cornea because it's just a little bit more normalized than if you run into issues looking at the inferior aspect in the case of low cones. And we all know that typical um, corneal shape looks like on a normal patient. We have a, a feel for it. So you can actually tell when you're looking at this uh, corneal shape uh, whether it's steep or flat it, with reference to what we're most familiar to looking at. So once we've determined that, that profile, we also can uh, determine what shapes we're working with. So uh, we have topography examples, and they break down ker keratoconus into central keratoconus with a steep periphery and central keratoconus with more of a flat periphery. Um, we have the low decentered cone as well as pellucid marginal degeneration. And here they have the actual corneal profiles, so you can kind of gauge what they consider mild, moderate, and advanced uh, just by looking at these profiles because this particular um, uh, image is in the fitting guide, and this is what's going to help you select your first diagnostic lens. And lastly, we have that post-surgical eye, whether it's a transplant or post-refractive surgery, that has that a reverse geometry profile, that tabletop type uh, presentation. And that's when you would use that 862 diagnostic lens that's in your set. So here's the initial lens selection guide, and so there's a lot of detail on this slide, but again, if we're just looking at the mild categories, you can see here that you start with the same lens across all categories, the 8-6-14-5 standard lens. So again, 8-6 is a base curve we're used to thinking about when fitting standard soft lenses, so we just have to remember, just because our cornea corneal um, curvature is steep, we will not be jumping to that 7-8 lens in our diagnostic set. We actually have to just think uh, of that we're fitting the whole cornea using the Kerasoft lens. And re remember, we want this lens to drape over the cornea. We don't want any extra tear pooling under this particular design. So once we select the lens, then we put it on, and I like to take a look right away as soon as the lens is applied to the eye. And what we're looking for is just generally, um, is it centered on the eye? We want to make sure that there's no bubbles. If there's any bubbles that are located under this lens, we can scoot the lens up 
or try and just pop those bubbles. Now, if you cannot pop those bubbles after your initial application of the lens, that too suggests that the lens that you selected might be too steep for this patient. So you might want to go back and try a flatter lens from your diagnostic set. The other thing I'm looking at is if there's any edge fluting. Um, this we typically will see with corneal transplant patients. And so I just want to see if we have it too loose. If it's too loose in the periphery, I'm going to select another lens with a, a, a tighter periphery for the patient uh, just to get started. Now, <clears throat> with with the, uh, the lens assessment, we want to, it's really important that you assess this lens within the first five minutes of application. So you don't want to put this lens on and then send the patient out to the waiting room for 20 minutes. Uh, all of the Morocco steps, which we'll go through in a second, are really um, geared toward that first five minutes evaluation. It's really important that you do um, assess this lens during that time point. So, what is this Morocco VA technique? Morocco VA is this acronym that stands for movement, rotation, centration, comfort, and visual acuity. And all of them taken together create this dynamic assessment. So let's break this down to each of the steps. We've got the movement. So with this lens, ideal movement is between one to two millimeters of movement. And you want to look at straight ahead gaze as well as up gaze. Now this is, again, a lot more movement than what we're used to seeing with our standard soft toric lenses. But this is, this is what's considered ideal for the Kerasoft IC lens. Next, we have rotation. Again, this lens is stabilized with a prism ballast. And so the lenses are marked. The right lens is marked with a vertical hash mark at 6 o'clock. And the left lens is an interrupted hash mark. So it's really easy to see um, if the patient has uh, in, uh, switched their lenses up when, if they're coming in with problems. Now, we want up to 10 degrees rotation. Really, ideally, we want no rotation. We want that marking at 6 o'clock. If the lens is rotated more than 10 degrees and it's kind of locked on, so say it's 15 degrees or 20 degrees and holding steady between the blanks, up gaze, that's suggesting that the lens is fitting too tight. If we see that that rotation um, mark is swinging, that that is an unstable rotation, and that's suggesting that the lens is loose. So the reason I call it the dynamic assessment is because while we're breaking these steps down into Morocco, we're actually looking at them all together. So if I see some swinging rotation, I'm expecting that the lens is also going to be moving um, well over one and a half uh, millimeters, probably more than two millimeters. So again, that swinging movement, a swinging rotation with excess movement is suggesting that the lens is pretty loose. Conversely, if you see minimal movement, you're not going to see that rotation um, moving um, in, an uh, in an unstable fashion. It's going to be locked on somewhere. And traditionally, if the lens is too tight, you won't actually see the, that marking at six o'clock. Sometimes you will but it might lock on in a different position. Centration is obvious. Um, this lens has an 8 millimeter optic zone. One thing I will caution you with this lens is it's really important to take the, the housing of the salt lamp and put it directly in front of the patient because when you change the angle of the light, you're going to see that the angle of the centration seems to be displaced. So again, the best way to observe this is with your housing directly in front of the patient's eye. And you'll be able to really see that central optic zone. It is an 8 millimeter optic zone, and it's highlighted really nicely with the slit lamp. <clears throat> Comfort. This is pretty self-explanatory. It's a soft contact lens. It should be comfortable for your patient. So if when you insert the lens, um, the patient is uncomfortable, start su suspecting that the lens is fitting a little too flat. Now, if the lens is dispensed to the patient and they come back complaining that there's, there's an area that, that gets worse as the day goes on, then start suspecting that the lens is tight. 
Now, it might not be tight all the way around. It might be tight just in one sector. And that's another feature that we'll describe a little bit later that this lens has. It has sector management control. So you can actually loosen up to or, or tighten if you need to two sectors independent of one another using this lens design. The visual acuity, again, is very straightforward. This, to me, determines my base curve. So the visual acuity should be stable between the blink. And I'll typically use an autorefractor just to save some time. And I don't refine my, my refraction. Um, as long as I can get them seeing good enough, I'm going to put uh, and isolate a line on the chart. And I'll just have them blink. And I want them to tell me if the vision stays the same between the blink. If the lens is fitting flat, it's going to be blurry because the lens is trying to find its home. And then it's going to settle itself and the vision will start to clear up. If the fit is fitting too steeply, the, it's going to be well centered right after the blink and then drop off. And that's why the vision will start to get blurry. So if there's some instability of the vision, this is where I want to determine what type of instability they have. Because for me, the, my base curve determination is based on the stability of vision between the blink. And like I said, we can change the periphery relative to the base curve. And we'll describe that in more detail. But for example, if the Morocco steps so far are perfect, but say for instance the vision is clear and then gets blurry, that's suggesting that the lens is steep. And so if the Morocco steps are right, and, and in, in the good category, that might be the, the uh, peripheral curve that you want for this lens. And then the base curve will be whatever provides the vision and um, is visual stability. So here's an example of a dynamic assessment form. This is available through um, the website, through Metro Op website, you can download it and make copies. And here you can see all of these steps of Morocco are laid out. And this is a really good communication tool for the lab because if you're struggling and you're contacting their consultants and you're struggling with the fit, they're going to ask you all of the details of the Morocco VA steps. So this will keep everything in order. And while it seems like I've covered a lot of time with each step, Really, when you're assessing this lens, it happens very fast. You can assess all of the Morocco steps in under a few seconds. So you'll see it all together. But again, it's very important to know the um, ideal endpoints for each of the Morocco steps. And the endpoints are listed in the fitting guide. This, this too is listed in the fitting guide. And what's nice is they have this traffic light appearance of their fitting guide of what's optimal what you should slow down and consider reassessing your diagnostic cho lens choice. And lastly, if you're in the red category, do not order that diagnostic lens for the patient. Order, uh, sig this does suggest uh, some troubleshooting ideas of what to do in the case of if you're in the yellow or in the red. So when you would actually change the periphery independent of the base curve is in those cases like the reverse geometry profiles that you have. Say, for instance, I selected the 8.6 standard lens for this, for this particular patient here. So you can see that um, you wouldn't be able to see this behind the slit lamp, but you can see just in theory that this lens is too loose in the periphery. So what I would find is that my Morocco steps might be indicating that the lens is too loose. So we've got excessive movement, the rotation might be unstable, um, it might be a little decentered, uh, and so these are the things I'm thinking of. So, but before I would actually go to my fitting set and try another lens, I still want to double check the vision. And so in this case, and that's why I don't refine my refractions when I'm, when I'm assessing this lens. I, I assess their vision based on the best line that they can achieve with the, the, the 
early over refraction I do. And this particular lens for this patient would provide stable vision between the blink. It's just the rest of the steps are not appropriate. And that's why we know that the 8-6 is the right base curve, but for some reason the fit isn't appropriate, so we'd have to try steeper lenses in the set. So you could actually try a steeper lens in your fitting set and see if it meets the Morocco criteria ideally, or you could actually try the 8.6 steep 2 lens that is um, already um, uh, in your fitting set. Lastly, we have the uh, flat periphery situation, and you can see here, this is one of those situations where the lens might be ideal centrally for this steep nipple cone, but peripherally, <clears throat> you can see that there's all of this space. In this situation, you might actually get bubbles filling that, um, that space, and so that lens might be acting too tight, and this is why they have the 8-2 flat 2 lens in your diagnostic set. Sector management control is this feature where you can change the periphery um, uh, in two different uh, sectors. And again, um, while this all seems complex, it's great tools when you need to customize for your patient. This is indicated in less than 10% of fit. So this is something I rarely use, but it's great to have, in particular in those patients where we have fluting, like in those corneal transplant situations. So the sectors, uh, the width of the sector is determined by these angles. Angle 1, angle 2 is sector 1, angle 3 and angle 4 is sector 2. The rule is that these blended areas can't be less than 30 degrees. This is where I rely on the consultants um, exclusively. They know exactly all of these rules, so I don't have to keep uh, remembering them. And so these are examples of the classic and the custom SMC, or the sector management control. Classic just means there's a top and a bottom to the lens. So these angles are set, and again, this is all in the fitting guide, and the lab consultants already know this at Metro. And um, so this would be when I have a low cone or pellucid case, and how I would know I need to do this is say, for instance, Morocco and vision is ideal. However, when the patient looks up, the lens decenters down. It drops down rather rapidly. So this is how I know that I would need to tuck that bottom edge down and steepen the inferior sector of this lens because everything else is ideal. The movement and primary gaze is ideal. Rotation would be, you know, limited rotation. It would be centered. It just wouldn't be centered in up gaze, and that's when I need to consider the classic SMC. The custom SMC, again, is very straightforward. If I have an area of fluting, then I want to basically tuck that area down. And um, again, I don't want to make that sector um, very uh, narrow around that. I want to make a broad sector to, <clears throat> to really uh, tuck that uh, edge down for the patient. When it comes to lens care and handling, for solutions you can use BioTrue or the, any of the prox, hydrogen peroxide systems like ProxyClear for this lens, it's compatible. With lens removal though, um, it's a little tricky. This lens can be very slippery, so it might be a little hard to remove when you're first getting used to this lens, and that's why I'm showing this video of the 6 and 12 technique, like how you would take a, GP, a corneal GP lens out. <clears throat> Um, remember, our lens is, uh, an ideal fitting lens has one to two millimeters of movement, so it's definitely not tight. However, um, it's just really easier to handle this lens using the 6 and 12 technique. And typically a tip is I have the patient hold their hand out in front of them because a lot of times the 6 and 12 technique, when I'm taking the lens out, it'll fly out. So you just have to be prepared to catch it. Um, a fitting tip for you is if the diagnostic or if the prescription lens doesn't perform the way you expect, you go back to the trial set, and that will help. Um, uh, you sometimes will find that you might have evaluated it uh, not ideally the first time around. And again, that's where that five minutes comes into play. So again, if something comes out the way you didn't expect, go back to the trial set and try that initial diagnostic lens that you had. 
When it comes to ordering, this is the dynamic assessment form. Again, make sure that you tell the lab which way the lens is rotated, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, and how many degrees it's rotated. Also, when you're recording your over-refraction, make sure you record the back vertex distance um, as well for any power that's greater than plus or minus four diopters. And don't forget to record whether the periphery is standard, flat, or steep. One thing I think is really important is making sure that the lab knows what you're working with because if the lab, if, if you've already vertexed your power for the lab and you include a vertex distance, they might further vertex it for you. So be very clear. Personally, I just have the lab do all the work themselves and I just let them know that I did not vertex the power because you don't want to double vertex that power. Um, some other fitting tips, again, the, the lens is fit with reference to the overall corneal shape, so we'll be using some flatter base curves than usual. So um, that's why uh, we have the set and the flatter base curve parameters. It's very important that you f evaluate the fit within the first five minutes. If you do have limited information about the cornea, you can start with an A2 standard diagnostic lens, and based on the Morocco, you'll know whether or not you need to go steeper or flatter. If you need more fitting lenses, that say you have some advanced cases, you need a steeper base curve in your set, you can order extra fitting diagnostic lenses from Metro. It's always important with our, care, uh, with our uh, irregular cornea patients to manage their expectations. Sometimes our, our intolerant corneal GP patients may have excellent vision with their GPs, just comfort might be reduced. And if they're selecting a Kerasoft lens, the vision might not be as good as the GP lens in some cases. So they have to decide themselves what they want, if they want improved comfort or if they want improved vision. And in some cases, I've had better vision with the Kerasoft than the GP, and the converse is true. So really, that's why it's helpful to have a diagnostic fitting set in your office, because you'll know the endpoint, and the patient can preview it in the chair. Post-refractive surgery patients tend to have higher expectations with regard to visual acuity, and basically, that's because their vision abruptly changed after they had the complication uh, post-refractive uh, surgery. Our naturally occurring ectasia patients have had a gradual decline in their vision over years, and so they don't uh, have that uh, sh sharp visual endpoint that they can recall so easily like your refractive surgery patients. So again, you just have to be, bear in mind where they're coming from. And lastly, we need to understand with the patient that refitting to any type of contact lens for an irregular cornea does take time, including the Kerasoft. It's just like any other specialty lens. It might take more visits for the patient, but um, ideally they'll end up with uh, good success. So I'd like to um, end my portion of this presentation by encouraging you to visit the Kerasoft training website, um, kerasofttraining.com, to learn more about this lens and see if this will fit in for your office and the patients that you see. But before we answer any questions, I'm going to hand this over to the president of Metro Optics, Mr. Steve Webb, and he's going to review a few more features that they have to offer. Hello, Lynette. Thank you very much for uh, your fine presentation today. I um, wanted to just mention a couple of things here real quickly. Um, we do have a full web page dedicated to the Kerasoft on our website. Um, this features uh, a, link, a link to the training module, and by using the link off of our website, the default is that Metro is your laboratory of choice on the Kerasoft, so uh, you don't have to worry about um, choosing your laboratory when you go through the training modules. And of course on this web page we also feature a full set of documentation for the, the lens itself. Um, one of the useful things there is that the dynamic assessment form, if you need additional forms you can always download them and print them for yourself from the website. Uh, also on, on here we have a number of useful videos showing the removal technique as well as some patient testimonials, and uh, we will also feature uh, the webinars that we have done uh, on, on that page. Um, that 
covers everything that, that we've got on the website. And if you have any further questions, please just feel free to call our customer service department and talk to either customer service or one of us consultants. Um, also today, by being an attendee of the webinar, you are eligible to receive 50% off the purchase of your diagnostic kit. Excellent. That's great news. So uh, we're going to take some questions right now. If there are any questions, I see a few coming up. Um, one of the questions is with uh, uh, regarding high molecular fluorescein and if you need to use it with the Kerasoft IC lens. Um, using the Morocco steps, you actually don't need to use any high molecular weight fluorescein because with this lens we're not using uh, fluorescein patterns at all. Uh, we want the lens to actually drape over the cornea, so we don't want that corneal, uh, we don't want that tear pooling to occur um, under this lens. Um, okay, there is another question, and um, actually, uh, Steve, I'm going to send this one your way. Uh, the question is, is about the fitting sets and how long they last. Okay, um, thank you, Lynette. Um, the diagnostic kits are uh, do come with a one-year expiration date on the lenses themselves. So you want to monitor this to make sure that you keep your set within its its uh, usable lifetime. Now, uh, with Metro Optics, what we do as an added service for you on this product is that we monitor the age of your fitting sets. So. Um, about the time that your fitting set is about to expire at least one month in advance, you will be hearing from our customer service department, at which point we will automatically ship you a full set of replacement lenses for your set every year. Excellent. So um, if one of the questions is, it seems that the visual acuity results are opposite of what's expected with a soft lens. Is this specific to the Kerasoft IC lens? Um, actually, yes. Uh, again, um, there is something very unique about the uh, front surface optics. It's patented front surface optics with this design. And while it is in effect a super toric lens, um, you actually get better visual acuity even if your sill power is lower, like, like what you could get a standard lens off the shelf. Um, say for instance you had minus 1.5 diopters of sill, uh, you actually will still get better visual acuity with the Kerasoft IC lens um, than you would using a soft toric of the same parameters. I, again, I don't know why that is, but uh, in my experience, I have found that. And one of the questions, um, which is very uh, leads into this, is uh, with the over refraction over the diagnostic lens, would we do a spherical sill over refraction? And yes, in this case, I always start with a spherical over refraction. Again, using an auto refractor is really helpful. Um, but yes, I do a spherical sill over refraction. If we were masking the the irregularity with this lens, we would get only a spherical component. And that's not the mechanism of how this lens works. This lens actually takes that irregular astigmatism and makes it more regular. And uh, uh, Steve, um, what, what are the typical um, cylinder powers do you see in the orders that come through to you, since you see so many orders? Um, with ours, I've seen, I've seen quite a range of cylinders. Um, I'm actually surprised when I do get one of these that is a spherical prescription. Uh, most of the time I see a cylinder, it's usually in excess of three diopters and as high as six quite often. And, and that's been my experience fitting this lens as well. And also with my experience of having those high cylinders, again, you would expect the instability that when you're fitting soft toric lenses with high cells, you, you, you get some of that instability uh, of vision. But with the Kerasoft IC lens, um, I haven't noticed it that much. I think it's a very stable lens due to the prism ballasting and whatever feature they have on the front surface uh, as far as the optics are concerned. So is there anything you wanted to add, Steve, to uh, some of the things that you've encountered with practitioners and their ordering styles or things that, uh, that might help um, the attendees? I just, the only thing I would, would 
one reinforces the fact that uh, you, well, you said this several times in your presentation is to make sure that you fit this lens to the flat side. Uh, even though you are fitting a steep cornea in most cases, uh, most of the diagnostic lenses and the prescriptive lenses, uh, most prescriptive lenses I should say, uh, are in the 8.6 and 8.4 range. Excellent. And now, just... one thing one thing that I didn't see in the presentation today is the Morocco VA app. Oh, yes. Uh, the Morocco VA app is available on carasoftic.com. Again, that's carasoftic.com. Is there a link to the Carasoft IC, this is the information page on your website? As a matter of fact, there isn't at the moment, but I'm going to remedy that later on today. <laughs> okay, um, because the app is available there. It is not on the App Store. It is a web-based app, so you can make a link on your iPhone or iPad um, to it. And basically, you can go through the Morocco steps on the app. It will go through each step, and you just um, have a visualization of the lens on a cornea. And what's nice about it is it gives you troubleshooting help in that same red light, green light appearance. It'll tell you exactly which lens to try next if you're struggling. And it also has a feature where you can um, order the lens to the lab, so directly to the lab. You can email it from the, from the app directly. So it's, it's a nice extra additional tool when you're getting used to fitting this design. <clears throat> And um, let's see here. Lastly, um, I, there's a question about what the center thickness is of this lens. Now, the standard center thickness of this lens is 0.4. And that doesn't change with the, um, whether the cases are advanced or if they're mild. It's, it's a 0.4 lens. However, you can order this lens thinner. And um, I find that. Um, I will order this lens thinner, especially in cases of low cones and pellucid and corneal transplants, where I need this lens to drape more effectively. I will order the lens in the thin design. And you can just talk to the lab, and it can get as thin as, I believe, 0.25, Steve? <laughs> yes, you can get it um, on the thinner side. You can order a custom thickness at a 0.25 typically. Uh, also see here we have a question about warranty exchanges and defects. Um, well, with uh, all CareSoft lenses you get a 90-day warranty on your prescription uh, that will get you two no-charge no remakes within that time period uh, and full cancellation privilege. So if for some reason that uh, the lens fit is not ideal for this for the patient you're attempting. You can return all the lenses to our to us, and uh, we will refund all purchase prices. The only thing that you would be out is shipping charges. Excellent. Well, we're going to wrap up right now. We just want to thank you. We know your time is valuable. We appreciate your attendance um, on this webinar. And if there are any questions, please feel free to contact the consultants at Metro Optics. Um, visit their website, metro-optics.com. And if you want some more information about Kerasoft, it's kerasoftic.com. Again, thank you for your time, and we appreciate uh, your attendance. Have a good afternoon.